Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our service today in Jesus' name. I pray it will be a day of joy, a day of happiness, a day of seeing the face of the Lord, and a day of blessing in Jesus' name. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's good to worship the Lord. I said it's good to serve the Lord. And the Lord will serve, will bless us abundantly, not only today, every day of our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of worshiping and serving you. What a joy. What gladness, what happiness to come before you into the sanctuary of the Lord and to worship and to serve you. We're asking, O oh Lord, the joy of the Lord will be our strength in Jesus' name. We pray you speak to every one of us and we pray we'll recognize who you are, what you have done, what you are doing, what you will ever do. And our our presence or our, our people in your presence will be a great excitement to entering in to the abundant blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. Once again, grant your people joy. Grant your people happiness. Grant your people gladness. And all that you have for us in the service today, grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. We can sit down. We're coming to Job chapter 41. Job chapter 41. We're looking at verse 11. Job chapter 41, verse 11. Who has prevented me? God was asking Job. And then he said that I shall repay him whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I want you to underline that in your Bible. Here is God himself talking. Here is God himself confronting Job. Here is God speaking to you, speaking to me, speaking to the whole universe. Here is God speaking to the past generation and speaking to the present generation and speaking to everyone on the face of the earth. He said in the latter part of verse 11, and whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. Anything you can lay your hand upon, anything you can think about, even your very self, your very life, your very talent, everything you see, everything you think about, whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. Look at that statement and corroborate that what Genesis chapter 14 Genesis chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 19. Genesis chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 19. Here is um, Melchizedek blessing Abraham. And look at what he said about the Almighty God. He blessed him, and he blessed him, and he said, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, look at God now, look at God now, the possessor of heaven and earth. That he is everything in heaven, everything on earth belongs to the almighty God. Is the most high God and is the possessor, is the owner of heaven and earth. Why don't you go to verse 22 of that same chapter. In verse 22, and Abraham said to the king of Sodom, Melchizedek had spoken, and then Abraham now is speaking. He said, I've lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the Most High God. You know what Melchizedek called the Almighty God, the Most High God? And what Abraham called God, the Most High God? And look at this now, the possessor of heaven and earth. Abraham said, is the possessor of heaven and earth. 
and Melchizedek said is the possessor of heaven and earth almighty God himself said whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine come to Exodus I'm reading from chapter 19 verse 5 Exodus chapter 19 and we're looking at verse 5 you'll see the emphasis of the Lord himself is not talking to the whole nation the whole nation of Israel and he said now therefore now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people listen to this listen to this for all the earth is mine you cannot miss it as you look at the whole bible old testament new testament here is the indication we're given and here is the knowledge we have that god is the possessor of all things let's look at let's listen to jesus now we're looking at matthew chapter 11 matthew chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 25 here is the lord jesus christ and listen to his comment and listen to what he said about god about the almighty god at that time jesus answered and said i thank thee O father lord of heaven and earth think about that owner of heaven and earth the possessor of heaven and earth the controller the master the lord of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. The wise and the prudent, that means the worldly wise people in this world, you see them from them. They think they own that street. They think they own that land. They think they even own the whole country. And they think they own the whole earth. But Jesus said, the Father, the Father in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ affirmed that God is a creator. And because it's a creator, is the Lord of heaven and earth. As we come to the end of the Bible, we're looking at Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 11. Revelation chapter 4, we're reading from verse 11. We read it in Genesis, then we read it in the middle of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. Now we're coming to Revelation, and we're coming to the end of the Bible. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 4, reading from verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created. Tell me how many things there. Tell me, tell me, tell me aloud. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and were created. That is, in the mind of God, in the heart of God, in his innermost being, when he thought of creating the world, he created the world, everything in the world for his own pleasure. He created the world at that time. And even till now, even till now, it says, for thy pleasure they are and were created today we're looking at the word of god on the divine ownership of all things the divine ownership of all things the lord has told us already and the lord has communicated with us already the very truth that everything on earth the man and the woman, the boy and the girl, the black and the white, the south and the north and the east and the west and the people in the past and the people at present and the people that will ever come into this world, they were created by God for his pleasure. You are created for his pleasure. He owns you and because he owns you and everything you have, all the rivers from which you get your water to drink, he created that all the air with which you are able to breathe and sustain your life he created that all the plants that you are able to eat and sustain your life he created that everything pleasant everything good everything surrounding you to make your life a happy life he created everything the divine ownership of all things three things we're looking at number one his divine ownership of all things. His divine ownership of all things. Nobody else has that claim. Satan does not have that claim. 
evil spirits do not have that claim your people your parents do not have that claim you do not have that claim no man no minister no preacher no pastor nobody has that claim nobody can lay claim on you that he owes you he possesses you and therefore you are his puppet no his divine ownership of all things number two our double obligation before his throne the implication that we're children of God, the implication that we're creatures of God, the implication is there is a double obligation. Because of creation, he created us. Because of redemption, he redeemed us, he saved us, he brought us into his family. Creation, redemption. Redemption, creation. He, he brought us into this world and he bought us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ because of those two things. He has a double claim on our lives. And uh, yeah, we have double obligation before his throne. Point number three, the dutiful offering of a treasure. What's the implication that he created you? You have to offer yourself unto him. What's the implication? That he created all the things on earth. Anything we have that we call treasure, he created everything. And we have the, the, the dutiful offering and com compulsion to give that treasure back to him. And any, anything we have, anything we own, anything we possess, there's the dutiful offering of our treasure unto the Lord. Number one, the divine ownership of all things. Number two, our double obligation before his throne. Number three, the dutiful offering of our treasure. We're coming to number one. What's uh, my number one over there? His divine ownership of all things. I pray God will burn this statement into your heart in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 10, we're looking at verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 10, we're reading from verse 14. In verse 14, look at what he's saying here. He says, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also, and all that dwell, all that are all therein is. You see what the Lord is telling us? Number one, the heaven. And the heaven of heavens, everything belongs to the Lord. And then he talks about the earth. It, the desert, the, the forest, the land, the sea, the ocean, everything we call the earth, everything belongs to the Lord. By creation, that's just right. By creation, he brought everything to being. And then he says, with all that Therein is, all that therein is, anyone breathing, anyone that has life and is living here on earth, the word of God assures us everyone belongs to God. Begin to think about it now, that you belong to God by creation. And if you are far away from God, if you are not touching God, if you are not linking up with God, if you are not connecting with God, something is missing in your life. Because you belong to God by creation. We're looking at Exodus chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 29. Exodus chapter 9. And we're reading from verse 29. The same truth that has been emphasized every time in every verse that we're reading. Old Testament, New Testament to assure us and remind us that we belong to God, everything created by Him. And nobody can say, I just came by myself and God has no hand in this. And God is not, uh, is not involved in bringing me to the world. Exodus chapter 9 verse 29. And Moses said unto him, as soon as I'm gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hand unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hail that thou mayest know. Pharaoh, you're missing something that thou mayest know. Egypt, you're missing something that thou mayest know. The thunder 
and the hail the rain and the snow that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's how that the earth is the Lord's Pharaoh did not know that Pharaoh did not know God he said who is that God there are many people like that today in their emptiness in their vanity there are many people today in their upside down knowledge there are many people today in their deep deep ignorance they say who oh, is that god what's that god going to do what does that god mean to me that thou mayest know he wants you to know by the things that happened to egypt by the things the hail and the storm that happened to egypt and by the power of the man of god moses to be able to stop that thing and to say he that to you reach and no more and then he's talking to God about it. And it is so that you will know, that you will know that the whole earth belongs to the Lord. Have you thought about the things that are happening around? And have you imagined the things that could happen and the things that happen when we pray? Why is that happening? Why does God answer prayer? Why does God turn all those things around? And why does God say he has the final say? What's he trying to tell you? And what's he trying to convince you of that thou mayest know? In your little corner there, that thou mayest know. In your family there, that thou mayest know in your life that the earth is the Lord's. Everything belongs unto the Lord. I pray God will open our ears and to understand. It will touch our hearts so we will understand that everything, 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 virtually without any subtraction, everything belongs to the Lord. In First Chronicles chapter 29, First Chronicles chapter 29, I'm reading here from verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 29, we're reading from verse 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power. When you understand that, something great will happen in your life something mighty will happen in your life when you can say thine O lord is the greatness and the power the glory and the victory and the majesty for all look at this for all look at this for all understand this for all that is in the heaven and the earth is thine no exception nothing you can say no this one belongs to satan this one belongs to lucifer this one was created by the devil. This one was brought up by the demons. No, all that is in heaven, in the heaven and in the earth is thine. He says, thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Above all, the most high God, exalted above all. Look at verse 12. Both riches and honor come of thee. Both riches and honor come of thee. You know, it's like when you go to the bank to get some money. And he gives you some, they don't give you everything in the bank. The same thing, God owns everything. The little you have, the more the much you have, everything is coming from God. Both riches and honor come of thee. And thou reignest over all. And thou reignest over all. Except the rebels who say, no, I don't want him to reign over me. I don't want him to control my life or to control my treasure or to control my time. When you understand that God owns everything, you allow it's just the normal thing for him to reign over all because everything belongs to him. And in thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand is the easy to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort for all things come of thee? Look at that. Everything we have offered, everything we have given. Oh, we cannot say, I'm making a great sacrifice. I'm making a great offering. I'm giving something to God. God, I hope you understand this, that out of my great treasure i'm giving this unto you it says but who am i 
and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this lot for all things come of be and of thine own have we given thee of thine own have we given thee for we are strangers before thee and sojourners as were all our fathers our days on the earth as a shadow and there is none abiding O lord in verse 16 O lord our god all this storm that we have prepared to build thee an house it says for for thine for thine holy name everything comes of thine hand and it's all thine own it's all thine own there's nothing we can push aside and say well god you'll be surprised you've never seen something like this you'll be surprised you don't know about this one it says no everything is small and great everything be john minor everything belongs unto the lord look at nehemiah chapter 9 nehemiah chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. Everything belongs to the Lord. He might, uh, you know, give you some to, you know, be a caretaker and to, you know, control that. Have this in your pocket. Have this in your account. Have this in your house. Have this in your life. Hold on to it, uh, you know, until I tell you how I want that thing to be used. Everything belongs to God. Even your brain, even your mind, even your skill, even your knowledge, everything belongs to God. Nehemiah chapter 9, we're reading from verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6, Thou, even thou art the Lord alone. No, no competition with him. Go, no comparison with him. Even thou art Lord alone. It says, Thou hast made heaven and the heaven of heavens. That was made heaven and the heaven of heavens. And then it says, With their hosts, the earth, and all things that are therein, and the seas, and all that is therein, and the preserves them all, and the host of heaven worshipped thee. It says there's nothing you can, you know, say, well, that's ocean, that one does not belong to God. It says everything, everything belongs to God. He wants us to wake up. He wants us to wake up and then to begin to realize that we need to use the word my, my, my less than before. My house, my life, my time, my children, my family, my car, my possession, everything that, you know, God has given you just to take care of for his glory. Stop using mine. That thing belongs to him. And I pray you will make use of your life to the glory of God in Jesus' name. And I just said, Psalm 24. In Psalm 24, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And the world and they that dwell therein. The world and they that dwell therein. Everything and everyone. Everything belongs unto God. And look at Psalm 50. I'm reading from verse 10, Psalm 50, verse 10. Here is the Almighty God himself talking to the people. He says, for every beast of the forest is mine. Think about that. God, even going to the animal creation, he said, Satan did not create that. And the chief in the village did not create that. And the king in the local government did not create that. He said, every, every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon a thousand hills, everything his. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. They are all his. Look at verse 12. If I were hungry... I will not tell thee. He says, I'm not a beggar. 
I'm not asking, you know, give me this and give me this. If I ask for anything at all, it's for your good. I could take it without your knowledge. I could take it without your voluntarily giving it out. I can take your life. I can take your breath. I can take your family. I can take your possession because actually everything is mine and nobody can question me why God did you take that? What mouth have you got to question me? Because I own that and I only deposited it there and there and there and anytime I want to take it, I go there and take it. In verse 12, if I were hungry, I will not tell thee for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. That's the almighty God reminding us again that everything belongs to him. I pray God will make us conscious of that every time. I say God will make us conscious of that every time. And you know, there are people that are not serving God. And the reason they cannot serve God is, you know, uh, things are hard, things are tough. I need to go there. Uh, Sunday is a, is a day of marketing for me. And Sunday is a day when my contacts, business contacts, when they are all around and they are available. And if I, you know, go to church, the time I take going to church, and then I stay in the church for these hours, and then before I get back home, time is gone. Time is money. And I must make all the money I can make. They see that they are the people making the money. And God said, but what are you making the money for? I created you. And I want you to give me that whole day, one day in the week and serve me. And then whatever is right to sustain your existence on earth, I will give you. So why are you abandoning my worship? And then you are running after this and that. Everything belongs unto God. And he gives to the children of men whatever he wants to give them. Look at Psalm 115, Psalm 115. I'm reading from verse 16. Psalm 115, verse 16. This is important. Look at this. The heaven, even the heaven of heavens are the Lord's. Look at this now. But the earth as he given the earth has he given the earth has he given to the children of men whatever he does not give you you cannot have if god says no you are not having that you can spend sleepless nights and you can walk with your mind your head your eyes your ears and you can walk with your hands and walk your fingers to the bone if the lord does not give you you cannot possess if the lord does not give you there's no way you can have everything belongs to him the heaven even the heaven of heavens is the lord's but the earth as he given as he given to the children of men and when he gives you he will give you sufficient i said he will give you sufficient if you give sufficient time to worship him sufficient time to wait on the lord sufficient time to serve him he will give you more than you will ever need in jesus name we're looking at Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66, and I'm reading here from verse 1. Thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne. Here is the Lord talking now. He says, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? He's saying everything belongs unto him. I bought money. I bought silver. I bought gold. I bought currency. I bought water to use. Look at Haggai. Haggai, we're looking at chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 8. A guy chapter 2 reading from verse 8 the silver is mine and the gold is mine says the Lord of hosts it says are you you know keeping that thing up and are you hoarding that thing and are you you know kind of covering up that thing it says where well, you cover it I can see it I can see all throughout the whole universe and in any case nothing is mine 
if you're hiding it from me, if I want to make use of it, there are many ways I can make use of that. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Everything belongs to the Lord. You belong to the Lord. I belong to the Lord. Even those who are not saved, they belong to the Lord by creation. The Lord has created everyone. And he wants you to voluntarily come and offer yourself unto him. Your will and great will be your joy. Your will and great will be your happiness. Your will and great will be your success here on earth in Jesus' name. The one who created the brain and he has the key to open that brain. The key is in nobody's hand. And therefore you go, you are running and running. I must go for even on Sunday, the Lord's Day. I must go for this uh, extra study. That's the time. They fix the timetable. They fix the timetable of having a new degree in the morning. And so... Lord, I want to serve you, but you know my condition. I have to go for this cause. I have to go for that cause. And it's the time of the service in the morning. And I have to be there. No, you don't have to be there. It's because you do not realize the divine ownership of the Almighty God. That God owns everything and God has everything. I pray the Lord will help you and you will do the right thing every time in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 21. Luke chapter 10, verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. You will rejoice with Christ. And you rejoice like Christ and said, I thank thee, O Father. Look at this. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. We're already in uh, Matthew before. This is Luke now. And Luke is repeating the same thing. Uh, there's a difference between Matthew and Luke. Matthew was a tax collector, a publican. Luke was a medical doctor. He was an intelligent person. He was a, an educated person. He was the one that knew the studies of the most difficult subject on earth at that time. And yet Luke, by inspiration, said, Oh, Father, coming from the mouth of Jesus, you are the Lord of heaven and earth. Thou hast hid these things from the worldly wise and from the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Somebody said amen over there. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 28. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 28. Here is Paul, here is Paul now by inspiration saying, For in him we live, we cannot live outside him. He has our breath, he has our life. He has our existence, for in him we live and move and have our being. He's the creator and he's the owner. He's the one that possesses us, as certain also of your own prophets have said, for we are also his offspring. We are also his offspring. I pray that understanding will never leave you. I pray that knowledge will never leave you. Anywhere you go, anything you're doing, you always remember God because you understand in Him we live and move. First Corinthians chapter 10. In First Corinthians chapter 10, look at what the Old Testament has said and look at what the New Testament is saying very clearly and very pointedly and purposefully. In First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26, it says, for the earth is the Lord's. For the earth is the Lord's. For the whole globe is the Lord's. For the whole earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. And the fullness thereof. Look at verse 28. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols. What does that mean? Some people, ignorant people, 
people think that idols deserve anything they take that inheritance from God they take their riches from God they take all those material things and they take the animal and they offer to idols eat not for that for his sake that should eat to you and for conscience sake for the earth is the Lord's the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof very clear then everything we see and even the things you cannot see everything belongs unto the Lord and we're going to give honor to whom honor is due we're going to give glory to whom glory is due it belongs to him and we're going to act like that you're not go, you're not walking through the earth as if you are the possessor of the whole country and you're not doing whatever you want so to show that you are the possessor of the church of the living god and then you're not staying in a corner somewhere and saying hey come over here don't go in there. Before you go in there, come and see me. Don't you know I'm the owner? Don't you know I'm the possessor? Don't you know that I'm the one that controls everything? No, you are not. The Almighty God does. And he has that prerogative that God is the owner of all things. And I pray you will give honor unto the Lord and you give majesty and glory unto the Lord as the possessor of all things on earth, all things in heaven, in Jesus' name. I'm waiting for another amen. amen. Point number two now, our double obligation before his throne our double obligation before his throne why what kind of obligation do we have you cannot point to a sinner and say well he is not uh, giving honor to god so why should i give honor to god you cannot give uh, you cannot point to a church goer and say look at that church goer he takes his liberty sometimes he's in their church sometimes he's not in their church sometimes he decides only easter he will go to church only their christmas time he will go to church you cannot copy them because you understand number one by creation you belong to god number two by redemption you belong to god number one by creation we're coming to some 100 some 100 and I'm reading from verse 3 to start with Psalm 100. We're looking at a verse 3. Psalm 100, verse 3. It says, Know ye. It says, You must know this one. It is not something you will say. Well, it, is it optional for me to know it or not to know it? This is compulsory knowledge. This is what you must know. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. Somebody say, Amen. It is he that has made us, think about that, think about that, without his making you, giving you a chance to live, you will not be alive today. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That means then, by creation, you belong to him. By creation, you belong to him. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're reading from verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. It says, remember, what's the next word there? Tell me, tell me. Remember, tell me now thy creator in the days of the youth you know you see some misguided youths thank god for the youth in our church youths are you there this morning i said youths are you there this morning my my voice was stronger than yours when i was a young person now give me a yes with a young voice Remember now, thy creator in the days of the youth. Young people, let me tell you, when you remember God, it will brighten your life. It will brighten your brain. You know, let me give you a little testimony. I was a youth too many, many years ago, just, just some years ago now. I was youth. Now, I'm still youth in my heart. Only my, you know, my hair has turned gray. 
and you, you see young people that have young heart, I have a young heart, a young mind, and I have a young zeal, and I pray that you will have the same zeal and the same heart I have in Jesus' name. You know, I was converted when I was in a school where they did not believe in God. And then after that conversion, I started teaching in that school. And the whole of Sunday, I gave to the Lord. If we're doing anything on Saturday, and then they said, look at me, all the, all the, all the members of staff were there marking papers. We were doing something that the school wanted us to do. And they say, we're, go, we're coming tomorrow. And then they will say, we're going to be here at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. And everybody is looking at my direction. And then now they'll mention my name and say, Mr. So-and-so, have you heard? I said, of course I heard, but you know I'm not going to be here. I'm going to worship God. And our principal was there. He did not believe in God. And he taught everybody not to believe in God. But I stood out of the crowd. I, was, I will keep on standing out of the crowd. I about you, my boy, my girl there, what will you do? You stand out of the crowd in Jesus' name. And then I will go and, uh, you know, come back on Monday morning. Uh, you say, did they dismiss you? No, they couldn't because uh, all that God gave me I used for the young people. I taught class one, class two, class three, class four, class five, mathematics, and I taught everyone. And when they came out in their school, sir, they came out with distinction because God prospered the work of teaching in my hand. God will prosper you. And then I went, let me, let me help you young people. You see young people, they think, if I'm going to make it in life, I must sink myself into just what I want to do. I don't have time for church. I don't have time for salvation. I went to, you know, university with that same salvation. I went here with salvation. I came out with salvation. I didn't lose it in the class. I didn't lose it in the science lab. I didn't lose it in the maths class. I, I came in and I came out and I was stronger when I came out than when I went in. God will make you stronger. And then on, we always started our, was, you know, our exam on Monday, at least in our own set, always on Monday. And Sunday, I will go to church, and I will not be in a hurry. I will listen to the word of God, and I will pray my heart out. And I was not praying on exam. I was praying on my spiritual life. And then I will wait in the town for the evening service. I'll do the evening service, and i come back. One of my classmates will see me and say, so and so, you are joking with education. Because, and you know, exam is starting tomorrow. I said, God is on the throne. They will laugh at me. Where had a particular classmate. He was almost like a replica of my principal. He didn't believe in God too, but thank God I believe in God. Somebody there, I said, I believe in God. And then we go to the exam hall. You know, I will sleep, and then uh, after 12, when it comes to Monday, that's the way I led my life at that time. I'll, uh, you know, begin to read, and lo and behold, when I get to uh, Monday exam, everything I read, the, for the, you know, in the night, and now saw everything there, and I poured it out to them. What did I say, young people? And then when the exam came, the final exam, realizing that all my university days, I never spent any Sunday in a corner somewhere, in the library somewhere. I was always remember my creator in the days of my youth. And by the grace of God, you can check up the records, I came out top in the whole university, number one in the whole university. And of course, in our, in our search, First class, straight like that, without sweating. That's what I'm passing on to you, success without sweating. That's what I'm passing on to you, breakthrough without sweating. You will come and give your testimony. You will shake my hand. Remember, remember now thy creator in the days of the youth. You know, when you hear the word of God and then the prayer that is prayed over you, prayer must be answered concerning you. 
Success will come. Promotion will come. Power will come. And let me tell you another thing. You know, all those three years, I'm just looking back now, I'm surprised. All those three years, there was no day I said, I can't go to class, I'm sick. I can't go to church, I'm sick. Well, you will remain well. Protection over your life. Preservation over your life. Parents, you are going to rejoice over our children. Look at verse 1, chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of the youth, while the evil days come not. Evil days will not come to you. And the years, not, not, not the years draw near when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in it. Look at verse 13. Look at verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments but this is the whole duty of man for god shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil you're a child of god and you belong to god you'll keep on serving god I said, you'll keep on serving the Lord. Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 26. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. By creation, you belong to God. By creation, you are the property of the Lord. And God owes you by creation. Look at chapter 40, verse 26. Lift up your eyes on I and behold who has created these things. Lift up your eyes on high and behold all these things you see who has created all these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Not one thing will fail in your life. Has thou not known, verse 28, has thou not known, you will know. Has thou not heard, you will hear, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gave it power. He gave it power. Who is going to receive power today? He giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths outside, even the youths sinful, even the youths who are depending on their natural strength and they are not coming to God, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men who do not rely on God shall utterly fall. But, somebody tell me, but, tell me, tell me, you come to the church on Sunday and you come at the time we're meeting together to share the word of God, to study the word of God and to reveal the depths of the knowledge of the word of God and every time when you hear the word of God you wait on the Lord but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. No mountain will stand in your way. You will mount up with wings as eagles. No ocean, no river will stand in your way. You will mount up with wings as eagles. No sunny bush will, it will stand in your way in Jesus' name. They will mount up, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. No evil man, no evil woman will stand in your way in Jesus' name. They will mount up with wings as eagles. You will fly above them. You will go beyond them. This year, as the Lord has declared for us, you will cross every ocean. You will go over every mountain. And every hindrance will overcome in Jesus' name. They, who are the they? They, I said, who are the they? 
the day that wait upon the Lord and thank God you are here today. You are not sitting behind and saying, well, today is Sunday. I don't know what is going to happen. I need to go here. I need to visit a friend. I need to visit that. You are here and God will bless you for being here. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall, they shall, they shall. You know, I was reading the Bible, uh, you know, this uh, last week. Of course, I, I knew it before, but I was, uh, you know, reading for myself because I want to have new energy and new strength. And I was told, I, I read in Genesis, as those angels came and, and Abraham saw them, and Abraham was almost 100 years of age, he got up and he ran towards them. I said, what? A man of a hundred running uh, that showed me today I can run. And then we're told, they said, please wait. Let me make some, uh, you know, some meat for you. And they said, go ahead. And then he ran. And then he took a kid. And you know all those kids and those uh, small animals, how they jump and do dodge and all that. But uh, Abraham ran after them. And he got it. And very quickly, they made something for those angels to eat. I said, look at the man running. I thought I was going to slow down before. But no, I'm going to run now. Somebody there is going to run after me. Somebody there is going to run beside me. Somebody there is going to run ahead of me. It says they shall run and they shall not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You know, uh, some, some people, they walk a little and then after two blocks, they sit down, they say, please, uh, you can go if you want to wait for me. And they sit down there and then they get up again and they sit again and then they be fainting as gone. Tiredness as gone. Power for everyone in Jesus' name understand our obligation by creation we have obligation to him. number two by redemption because of redemption because he bought us and because he purchased us and because he saved us we have an obligation towards him we're looking at first corinthians chapter six first corinthians chapter six i'm reading from verse 19 and from verse 20. first corinthians chapter six verse 19 watch know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you and ye have which ye have of God, and ye are not your own by creation, ye are not your own by redemption, ye are not your own because you came out of the hand of God, He created you, ye are not your own, and because the blood of Jesus Christ was the was the price of your salvation, your redemption, and ye are not your own. Verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. For ye are purchased with a price. And it says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You belong to God. I belong to God. And because we belong to God, we're totally sold out to him. Because we belong to God, we totally give ourselves unto him. Look at chapter 7, chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians. I'm reading from verse 23. Chapter 7, verse 23, it says, Ye are bought with a price. Look at that again. Ye are bought with, price, with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. What's that saying? It's saying any man, any woman, men, women that will hold you down and say, no, you're, you're serving God too much. You're running too fast. You are walking too uh, frequently in the way of the Lord. You say, don't be their servant. And don't listen to them. Don't allow anybody to draw you back. Don't allow anybody to, uh, you know, pull you down and say that, you know, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. You'll keep on serving the Lord. I said, you'll keep on serving the Lord because you belong to God, number one, by creation, number two, by redemption. Look at verse 35, verse 35, and this I speak for your own profit, that you serve the Lord without looking back, that you serve the Lord without reservation, 
that you serve the Lord without allowing a rival to come into your service without sharing your time, without sharing your consecration, without sharing your life between God and that personality. And see if that personality is also an equal to God. You say, yes, I'm born again. I'm bought with a price all my life all my time everything that i call mine i give unto the lord why and this i speak for your own profit not that i may cast a snare upon you but for you for that which is comely that ye may attend upon the lord tell me that ye may attend upon the lord tell me out aloud without destruction without destruction that you may attend upon the lord without any destruction because you understand i totally completely belong unto the lord we're coming to the psalms we're looking at psalm 4 we're looking at psalm 4 and we're looking at verse 3 psalm 4 and verse 3 if you're born again if you are purchased, if you are redeemed, look at what the Lord is saying. He says, you must know this. In Psalm 4, and we're looking at verse 3, it says, but no, you must know this one. Thank God I know. I say, thank God I know. I say, thank God I know. You know, sometimes maybe there are four people of the same father and the same mother, and one of them that is you, you single yourself out. You know what all the other siblings, brothers and sisters, what they don't know. And because you know what they don't know, you act different. You live different. You go in a different direction because you know what they do not know. What do you know? Look at this. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. He has set apart him that is godly for himself. Because of what I know, my relatives may say, they call me by my first name, they say, come now, we're all going to do this. And I say, no. They say, why? Because I know what you don't know. And then my classmates might say, come, we're going to do this. I say, no. Why do you say no? Because I know what you don't know. And my community people may say, come, we're all going to do this together. It's a good thing. It says, it's good for you. But I know something you don't know. It says, no, that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord has set me apart for himself. I said, the Lord has set me apart for himself. I'm not going to share my life between God and Satan. I'm not going to share my life between God and society. I'm not going to share my life between God and any person on earth. The Lord set me apart for himself. The Lord will hear when I call on him. The Lord will hear when you call on him. The amens are dying down. Yeah. Romans, Romans now chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. I'm reading here from verse 7 and verse 8. Romans chapter 7 and we look chapter 14. And we're reading from verse 7. Romans chapter 14, verse 7. For none of us liveth unto himself. We're bought with a price. We're bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. We're redeemed by the greatest price heaven could pay for us, could pay on us. And it says, for none of us liveth unto himself. You know what? When you are supposed to be in the presence of God, and you say, I have another thing I'm thinking about. Instead of being in the presence of God, I want to be in another place. You're living unto yourself. You're acting as if you're a free property. You're a loose property. You can hang around there, hang around there. And your life, I pray your life will not be useless. Your life will be useful. Your life will be profitable. For none of us liveth unto himself. No man dies unto himself. No man dies unto himself. 
uh, you, you know sometimes there are people that even decide that it is time for them to die you're surprised they have gone to school they come out of school they even walk in and they have good parents and they have good opportunity and they, 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 they know they can come to a church like this and they can have satisfaction and fulfillment in the Lord. But instead of that, they say, it's time. They want to go. Where are they going? They do not understand that when they take their lives, where are they going? I say, where are they going? They think they have the control of their own life, of their own time. And it says, no man dies unto himself you will not take your own life. This life will be useful. This life will be profitable. Whatever is happening, did you not see Job? Look at him, what he went through. Although he complained, although he cried, although he wept, although he did.